Okay, okay, moving on. Over the years, Will Smith has been open about the toxic nature of his parents' marriage during his childhood, which ultimately led to their divorce in 2000. Well, during the divorce, Smith stood beside his mother and remained completely loyal to her. In his new memoir, man, this, they talking all their business lately. <laughs> it's every day. It's every, every day. Now. Today, they talking about Will Smith. Okay, Will Smith uh, mentioned that he always struggled with the feeling that wanting to seek revenge on his father to honor his mother. And Smith admitted to contemplating with the idea of pushing his father, who was battling with cancer at the time, down a flight of steps to play it off as an accident. Smith said, I'm Will Smith. No one would ever believe I killed my father on purpose. I'm one of the best actors in the world. My uh, 911 call would have been Academy Award level. Now, Will Smith justified his thoughts due to the pain, anger, and resentment he had for his father throughout his entire life. What are your thoughts on Will Smith opening up about his resentment towards his father, which is a real thing. When you have a, you know, parents, one cheat on the other, or one is abusive. Sure. As a child, I mean, my, f- anyways, what do y'all think about this? Who hasn't thought about pushing one of their parents down the flight of stairs? God knows Ooh. in my teenage, God knows in my teenage years, I used to get mad as hell and I definitely got some emotional scars. Now, what I say, now, now let me take that back. I mean, I was saying that facetiously, y'all. I ain't never think about pushing my <laughs> Maybe in the heat of the moment, I might have wanted them to go play in traffic. Um, <laughs> you know, listen. I'm just going to say it's something, some type of itchy, gitchy, ya ya Jada doing over there because she telling all the business at that damn red table and now Will telling all the damn business in this damn book. Um, it's a real thing, though. It, it, it's a real thing. And I think when we get beyond the shock value of the story, because obviously he's trying to sell a book, we'll probably get more to the pain that he experienced at the hand of his father. And I think that's not something that we hear Black men talk about a lot the issues that we have with our fathers and the daddy issues that we go on to have. Contrary to popular belief, boys do have daddy issues as well. Um, and so I think that when it's all said and done, we'll, we'll probably get a deeper story that'll be healing for the community. Al, before we, I want to ask you, like, I think I, I sure. like that we have celebrity ho- uh, headlines and I want to take the show a little bit in a different direction as far as like using the celebrity uh, headline to encourage a conversation and dialogue about what we feel. Like, I don't feel like we should just be sitting around talking about celebs. And they are going to be, we're going to make some changes to that. Okay. That'll protect us a little bit more. I think we should talk about the concept and the things like the idea that I think that will give us a more fulfilling kind of conversation for us and for the people watching. So Al, have we, are your parents together? Uh, my parents were together. They're both uh, deceased now. Okay, but, so yeah, they were together know. all 40 years. I, I lived in a two family household. What do you feel about um, resentment towards a parent that maybe you've seen one abuse the other? Like, and how do you feel about people just being, you know, owning that? Well, look, uh, I think that's a very tough question because I'm sure a lot of us have been in a family dynamic where the father and the mother hasn't always walked on a bed of roses and you've seen some ugly stuff. If you've been with someone for a long time, you've seen the good, you've seen the bad, and you've seen the ugly. The thing that I love the most about my parents and what they taught me was that, you know, that was that day. That was that period. That was that time. How my father was when he married my mother when they were 20 is not the same father at 69. And how he deal with things in his 20s was a different survival mechanism than he will apply or you know use at the age of 69. So they told me, you just got to stick in there. You got to you got to roll with the punches and you've got to be committed to understand that, A, you got to have compassion. B, you got to always be willing to forgive. And three, you got to know that love conquers all, in my, in my personal opinion. And I think I learned that from seeing my parents together for 45 years. Was it always great and grand? Absolutely not. But what I learned from them was that there's always a better day the next day or the next year or the next decade. And if you just commit to honesty, uh, love, respect, and compassion, you can you can you can survive in marriage. I was going to start on another topic, but we just have two minutes before break, so we're just going to like talk, do a little deeper d- dive into this. My my parents were divorced when I was ten, and um, I was old enough to remember certain things that were happening in the house without putting anybody on blast. But it was definitely um, some things that I shouldn't have heard or seen as a ten year old. 
You know what I'm saying? And um, I don't think love conquers all. Well, let me let me let me re- rewind. Mm. That. I think that things be called love that is not really love. Mm-hmm. And I think parents have a responsibility to stop allowing their kids to hear and see certain things in their formative years because you want to want want to know why women men out here with these relationship issues and daddy issues and issues with intimacy and connecting and being there for each other. A lot of times you trace that back to year three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The things yep. that they saw in their parents' homes. And then, you know, if you were born in the 70s, 80s, you had parents or a mom that most likely said, well, I'm just going to put up with this and it's for the kids mm-hmm. and I, what else? I don't have a job and I can't leave. Mm-hmm. I had an immigrant mother that wasn't even a, a citizen that she had to just like deal with it until she did not mm-hmm. And the things I remember is just like, damn, like I, I, what, I don't side I will for what he said because if he saw abusive things in his household, that is a natural thing to be protective over your mama. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and shout out to him for being so honest and saying, I thought about pushing this mother down the steps because mm-hmm. that's the way his daddy made him feel. Made so him his feel. daddy abused his mm-hmm. mom, you know? Mm-hmm. What do y'all think mm-hmm. about that? You know, no, I think you're absolutely right, Claudia. And I, and I also want to add to this, you know, my story is a little different. My parents divorced when I was two months old. I have no concept of my mom and dad ever being together. But my mom, my entire life, talked so much crap about my doggone father. He, I might as well have been in the toxic household. So moral of the story is to stop putting y'all kids in y'all relationship business. My parents were divorced when I was two months old. I have no business knowing how he cheated, when he cheated, who he cheated with, where it was, how it made me. I had no business knowing all of that. And it shaped the way I looked at my father until the day he died, all the toxic things that my mom planted in my head. And I'm going to tell you something. A couple years later, and when I got older, my dad decided that he wanted to sit down and tell me some things. And when he told me some things, it actually left me resenting my mother for a very long time because I was like, oh, baby, you told a very one-sided story that had only 16 years looking at this man a certain type of way when, uh, you know, your hands wasn't all that clean either, Miss Ma'am. Uh-huh. Well, thanks for engaging in this. I got to say, my mom never slapped. She never slanted my dad, and she could have because I stuff that I heard myself, and she never did that. And she made sure that we knew what we were, and uh, starts culture wise, our blackness. And, you know, there are, you know, it, it just I want parents to be more respectful and understanding of what that's doing to their kids that are watching. We're sponges at that age, right? We're sponges. 